30 in the morning. I was up at like four for a little while and then went back to sleep. We don't get to match us till I don't know what time, but we'll just say midday. It is overcast. It's been raining and cooled way down. And just so happened yesterday, we had to spend our own board credit. Ooh, I'm standing in water in my little free cheap slippers or absorbing it because that's what they're made to do right <laughs> um it just so happens that uh, i got a rain jacket with our own word credit that we had to spend yeah so yesterday we stayed in our room or her room we stayed on the ship we were in uh Coupi, point Coupi, i think is how you say it Parish, and it's just a tiny little town. They had like four little stops and an open hop on and off bus. That we were only going to be there in the morning, and then we were spending two whole days, I think, in Natchez. But because of the river, everything has changed constantly. And so, you know, you just have to be flexible. So, anyway, we were there. And at 6.30 in the morning when I got up, I think I had a video of it, there were buses showing up. Well, at 8 or 8.30, when they're supposed to take people in these off, hop on and off buses, they weren't there. I don't know what that was about. Unless they were tour buses and hop on and off buses, but I had seen three. So you'd think that would be enough for 141 people, because I think each bus holds 50, they said. But whatever the story is, uh, we ended up staying until almost 5 o'clock. Um, you know, all aboard was score 30, so we could leave at around 5. So because of that, we're getting into Natchez a little bit later today. And we're in Natchez for two days, or actually now a day and a half, because we can't go to Vicksburg. So... <laughs> Um, we did have an excursion for tomorrow for Vicksburg that they were still going to do, even though we landed in Natchez, but they were busing us, and it was two and a half hours to get to Vicksburg, or two hours to get to Vicksburg, and then the whole excursion, then two hours back, and it was going to be six and a half hours on the bus, and we just said, no, thank you, that's a long time, you know. So we didn't do that. We canceled that. But we do have one today for this afternoon when we get to Natchez. I'm so glad I picked the afternoon one. And it is about cotton and the history of like growing cotton, which is interesting to me because my grandparents, great-grandparents, and great-great-grandparents in Arkansas, at least, grew cotton. And I'm sure they grew cotton before when they lived in Alabama. <laughs> but, and all the other lines. That, that's just my surname line. You know how genealogy is. You have... It grows exponentially. But anyway, I'm pretty much sure they were all cotton farmers. Maybe far enough back tobacco. But. So that is the plan for today. Dinner and food everywhere has been great the shows and the, the talent that we last night we had um what would you call him i guess an impersonator is the word but anyway he looked like samuel clemens also known as mark twain uh, by his famous more famous pen names he had lots of pen names uh he looked like him he talked like him for a long time and it was a, it was like a one-man show it was fascinating, and he did a great job. And yeah, and the entertainers, um, they are very talented. You know, there's just basically three of them in a band, a, uh, a jazz band, very talented. And everything is um, included in this trip. I mean, you could up your alcohol and get something fancy, I guess. Uh, I don't know what that would be, maybe some fancy wines or something. But... Uh, 
yeah it's just been so convenient you never hand over your ship card like you do on a caribbean cruise anytime you get something you just walk into a dining room you could walk into the dining room eat go to the other dining room eat come back eat again you know it's there's just no they're not keeping track of you in any way you just i don't know it's just been really easy and you know i always say on caribbean ships you can barely tell you're on a ship because they're so big this one you literally can barely tell you're on a boat occasionally and it's been pretty quiet we have if our neighbors were to make a ton of noise or something or something falls and slams maybe we hear it and then last night for just a little while from our room we heard the band on the floor you know below us but it it wasn't the kind of thing that would keep you awake if if you were trying to sleep at seven o'clock which we weren't um actually it wasn't seven it would have been nine o'clock but it wasn't even that loud and it was music and it was it wasn't the boom 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 of a bass because this was like Dixieland jazz so. anyway I'm gonna go drink some coffee and just wanted to recap since I really don't have pictures of where we went yesterday of the bluff and how flat Louisiana is it's and that's ship. a lesson in geography and history which I'll explain later Normally, when we do, we have a staff member on staff with a rake to make them any longer. And we plant on a raised seedbed. I'm from Illinois originally. That's where they plant flat, but they get 35 inches of rainfall. We get 65 or more. So when it rains heavily, we cannot risk having our seed washed away. So we raise the seedbed through a process called hipping the row. Hipping is throwing it up on the top. A lot of nostalgia here. Feels like home. But the ladies of society were so pleased by the way it was done that the crossing back into the local uh, newspaper Mississippi, wrote, back into Mississippi from the so Louisiana nice. side. I had my dinner table set. They did not break a single plate for my Fostoria. Now you can see up on the hill. And that, that you may have heard earlier today, Natchez under the hill had three more streets. Silver Street was the highest street. All of this and the Blue Cat Club was about half.
half a mile down that way under the water now. And that is She's what the, the old the man in the Mississippi has so done. A faster. The latest drought and then the cold. I think you learned a really good lesson from being able to see. Now as we make this little turn, you'll notice that you see a lot of brick. Had this house been finished, you would not have seen any brick. Brick was ugly. They would cover it over with stucco. Let's, let's all look like Greek Revival. And those temples were stucco. Given that they were either all the yellowed leaves, those aren't deciduous. That's due to lack of rain. The trees were dying around here, but it's raining today, so they're together. hopeful that it'll Hence, green back houses. up. But the gentleman that owned it, with you can see a little better back into the left, the property where the golf course was, and it it's a smaller house, not anything as elegant, but every one of these with it just as long as you don't take away the train station. Very, very good. I can tell Christy has been around to some of these restaurants. Pearl Street Pasta, the, street, the antique section. Oh, this is where Jerry Lee got married. And we are now when I was a kid, Jerry Lee Lewis. I thought it was the most wonderful thing in the world, and we could drive through it, and they'd have music playing, and, you know, kids today were right in the middle of the intersection, and the bus drivers love it, don't you, Christy? Oh, yeah. And the whole town comes out when they like the trip. And the children do carols and all of that. Let's please give our wonderful driver a huge, huge applause for back. Oh, 
Oh, okay, this one's a tough menu tonight because there's lots of things we'd like to have. Kind of want the crab chowder, but also the black eyed pea soup, which I've never had. And then there's quail, and there's lobster Rockefeller, or corn, but beef bourguignon as well. So Jerry's over there rolling the dice trying to figure it out. <laughs>